Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, welcome to the TUG's Distinguished Lecture Series. Today's event is of a different character than our traditional distinguished lectures, and it differs from them in two ways. Firstly, the scientist at the center of this event, Professor Arto Saloma, is very special. His research and writings over half a century inspired and guided some of the most significant de developments in foundations of computer science. He's one of the founders of and a towering figure in formal languages and automata theory. As a researcher, Professor Saloma is famous for being prolific, deep, and broad, and for pioneering many important research directions. He's had more than 500 publications, including 13 books translated into at least seven languages. His writings have had enormous influence on the development of theoretical computer science. Well-known examples are his famous formal languages book that was declared a classic by the Association for Co Computing Machinery and the three-volume masterpiece hand Handbook on for Formal Languages. Professor Saloma's enormous achievements are well recognized by the scientific community in both Finland and abroad. He is one of the most decorated computer scientists. Among others, he holds nine doctorates honoris causa. In 2001, he received Finland's highest scientific honor when he was appointed an academician. Only 12 scientists may hold this title at any mo moment of time. Moreover, and very importantly for us, is the fact that Professor Saloma is from Turku. As a matter of fact, Turku is his genuine home base, both in his personal and in his professional life. He is a true scientific icon of Turku. Secondly, on the organizational level, the form of today's event is different from the traditional form of the TUG's Distinguished Lecture Series. Rather than give a lecture, Professor Saloma is going to be interviewed by one of his outstanding former students, Professor Juhani Karhumaki, who himself is a world-leading authority in his own field of research. So la ladies and gentlemen, please welcome in, in, um, join in, in, in welcoming Professor Saloma and Professor Karhumaki. Okay, thank you very much, Sion, of this kind introduction. I'm very honored of being an interviewer of Academician Saloma. My, my, my duty is just to give questions, and the answers are coming from, from Arto. I, I could have some introduction, but there is no need it because Jon really pointed out some of the major achievements of Arto Saloma. Of course, I could speak one hour or two hours, and that still would not be a complete list of his achievements. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I, I would like to direct some of the questions so that Arto will reveal some of his achievements, and in particular, his kind of ideas, how research has changed, how it should be developed, and these kind of things. I would like, one thing I would like to say, that Arthur has been very, very broad. His, his influence is not only in mathematics or computer science, but it's actually much broader. And that was actually, that was visible already in his master's thesis. He did his master's in University of Turku in the 50s. It was in mathematics, but he was studying at the same time also humanities. So let's let's start this interview. So it's really fifty year journey from fifties till till I would say these days, and many of those I suppose were celebrating his eighty year birthday. We had a special conference here in Turku, in the University of Turku last last summer. Um, but let, let's. Start from the really origin of his research. So here's a picture of Arto and his father, Yalmari Saloma. So his father was very influential in establishing University of Turku. So he was very active in this money collection and all these kind of things. And he was a professor of philosophy in our university. So Arto, how, how do you feel? Did you feel that you, you had a kind of responsibility to follow your father in Turku? Or? 
Okay. So at first, I would like to also to, to welcome everybody here, and I, I, I thank uh, both of the people for the nice but uh, very highly exaggerated uh, introductions. So you can view this event, so this is a kind of unusual form, you can view this as a degenerate doctoral dissertation. So, so I, I am the candidate, Johan is the opponent, and Jon is the custos. <laughs> so so the, this is, uh, this is how, how, how you can view this. So uh, coming back to, to my father, so, so uh, he, he was really a long time professor of philosophy in, in, uh, at the University of Turku, and uh, he was professor that time, professor was really a big boss, so he was, uh, he, he, he was really quite, quite influential. And uh, so uh, what he said uh, was kind of a law. But uh, so he, uh, he suggested that I should become a lawyer because, as he said, I argue in every matter. So, uh, but uh, this uh, still, because of some reasons, didn't uh, happen. And uh, so I had another role model in, in my grandfather who was a priest, so I could have uh, become also a priest, but uh, one can't change it anymore, and I, I became what I became, and, and bad or good. So um, what uh, I, I still w would like to add was that I had very good background compared with, with uh, many other people, because uh, 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 I, I, I already at a very young age, I, I got used to the intricacies and, and, and all kinds of, of, of uh, things that happened in a university life. And, and I, I, uh, I learned about the very wrong decisions that, that were made. And, and, and uh, I have seen that this whole thing continues uh, through my life. I, I have experienced similar things. So, but I'm, I'm very, very happy. I, I'm not going to talk about my father more, so, so the, uh, I, I give, give the, the floor to the opponents. Okay. So, as Jon already mentioned, Arto is really a citizen of Turku, and he has basically done all his career in Turku, with the sm small exceptions. We are coming later. So I, I, I really I want to show this picture just as the hometown of Arto. And so what happened after graduating, so Arto actually went to Berkeley. He got a scholarship, Asla scholarship. I suppose these scholarships were not very common at that time, and it was some, some kind of new phenomena that, that <laughs> students from Turku went to, to USA or even to Berkeley to do the studies. So maybe you have something to say about that? Yes. So, uh, indeed, I, I had my, my first studies in, in Turku. I studied mathematics and humanities, and I, I got my master's degree here. And uh, then I, I planned to, to go abroad, but, but the uh, overall attitude those days in the academic circles of Finland was very much against kind of what one now talks about globalization and, and international contact. So. When I, I started to, to think about and, and tell that I, I, I could apply the uh, ASLA fellowships, then I, I was very much discouraged in this, that there is nothing for me to learn in, in America. They, they are only pop singers and, and football players and baseball players. So, so this, uh, uh, then this was not, not at all obvious. And so uh, maybe... Uh, you, you don't know about these uh, scholarships that were practically the only ones available that time. So they, they were based on the fact that Finland was the only country that con paid its debts to the United States after the First World War and, and still continued payments. And, uh, and, and then at some stage, uh, Congress decided that, that the money is going to use these for these grants. And, and, and so the, the, this was really, really the only possibility to, to, uh, to, to go 
go to the United States, it was also very, very difficult to go abroad at all because there was all uh, currency regulations and, and, and things like this. So, but, uh, and, and these uh, uh, ASLA grants, they were very, very hard to get, but some people got them and so many, many of the uh, kind of uh, uh, scientists that, that later became very good scientists in Finland, they, they really were. Asla grantees, and uh, so I, because of, of, of some luck and some something, I, I was able to get it, and so the picture shows when I have arrived in the Be Berkeley Railroad Station, and I, I was very happy looking, but uh, uh, if I would now arrive in the sim similar situation, I would not be happy because I had very little money, I had no place to go, and uh, I, I didn't really know what to do, but, but then Gradually everything was, was arranged and this was a great, great year, year for, for me, me in, in, in Berkeley. So uh, I, I was uh, kind of, uh, uh, in, in mathematics, I was already in Finland, I, I was interested in, 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 in mathematical logic and, and uh, why I uh, mentioned Berkeley in my application. So you could mention three universities in uh, in your application, and I, I mentioned Berkeley, and why I mentioned it was that uh, the, the very uh, famous logician Alfred Tarski was there, and so so I, I, I got there, and and so e eventually this was uh, a very crucial year for for me because I I also could uh, get good education in logic, and there is also where I I picked up automata theory. Yeah. I, I, I believe that these kind of studies in Berkeley, they were very kind of inspiring, and I think you have told about the seminars, what you had, and also about the lecturers, so the Tarski was there, and Mayhill was also one of your teachers. Can you say something about this environment of studies, and, and maybe also some kind of characteristic features of your teachers, because I think they were quite, quite the personalities. Oh, oh this, this is certainly true. So, so uh, my main teachers were really Mayhill and Tarski, as, as you mentioned. I, I took also some other courses like in number theory and, and, and topology, but, but uh, th th these were really, really my main teachers. And, and Mayhill was, was really a, a, a personality, so he is very famous in automata theory. If, um, most of you, you, you know, so, so has many, many uh, th basic theorems named uh, after him. He was originally from Birmingham, England, and uh, he had this uh, terrible accent, what was called Birmingham accent, and it was awfully difficult for me to understand, but somehow I, I, I managed, managed to understand it, and uh, somehow he was also out of this world, so, so once, uh, once we were wondering because he didn't come to a lecture, and uh, then when we started looking for him, he was in an entirely different room, and he had written already the blackboard full of, of, of stuff, and, and didn't notice that there was no, no audience there. So, and, and this is, and uh, this is in, in this Myhill seminar, I, I, I really uh, did what, uh, what I can say, say my, my first scientific work, so we, we, uh, we were using this uh, uh, fa then famous uh, book, o Automata Studies, by Princeton University Press, and, uh, and, and so uh, my task in the seminar with, with another guy, uh, Howard Jackson, was to, to construct a self-reproducing automaton. So uh, the von Neumann had, uh, had some uh, ideas of this in, in, in some of his work, but his construction was very, very incomplete, and, and we read it all, all in, in detail, so it was uh, all, all, all uh, it was uh, kind of a cellular automata that, that move, moves on the plane, and, and we, we gave detailed in instructions uh, in each situation what it does. Mind you, those, those days, uh, it was philosophically even unclear whether a machine could could reproduce itself because there were articles in, in many journals that, that, that this is not possible for a machine to, to reproduce 
itself because uh, somehow the machine that is uh, or the, the outcome must be simpler because it does not have the instructions to to to, to build another machine but uh, this was not not co of course this difficulty was uh, avoided in uh, in 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 uh, uh, for Neumann's uh, work and and so, so this this is what what we did so uh, my hill also in in uh, in his seminar, he, he presented uh, one of the basic theorems of automata theory, that is now one of the basic theorems of automata theory, uh, theory so-called Myhilny Road theorem. And, and so uh, uh, when he first presented it, so we didn't quite understand it. And then, then he just uh, left and said that, that you prove the converse. But nobody was able to prove the converse because we didn't really, really quite understand what was uh, it was all about. But it, it's a very good, good theorem. Then uh, coming, coming to Tarski, so he was entirely different. He was kind of uh, a person who, who dressed uh, always very, very elegantly. And he, he chain smoked. Winston cigarettes always in his lecture when he the, the, the other cigarette went out so he he, he lit another one and and so uh, uh, so he uh, uh, I also apart from his seminar I took uh, his uh, course in, in in foundations of geometry that that later later on appeared also as, as a book so uh, Tarski was f f first uh, not not too friendly when when I went to 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 see him. So he uh, he thought that this this strange guy uh, coming from a strange country and and so forth. But then then gradually uh, uh, it, it was okay. And so I was in his seminar. And he he also uh, uh, there were common seminars between uh, Stanford University and Tarski usually. Uh, uh, asked everybody to, to his his home and it, it was very very nice nice evening so this, this was really different from what I, I had used to be in in Finland because uh, p professors never uh, at, at those days uh, treated uh, students uh, at their homes so uh, these were my, my kind of my basic uh, kind of teachers in 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 in, in Berkeley now my idea was was not to to uh, to move uh, to uh, to America like uh, like Johannes said that uh, I, I, I I like Turku very much so so I I, I didn't want, want to move and, and uh, Tarski was was a very very difficult uh, kind of supervisor so I'm I'm quite sure that I I, I would have not succeeded in in, in writing a a thesis with with him, and then my other reason was really that that uh, uh, like I said, something happened that happened in America was not very well appreciated in Finland. So I, I was sure that if I was sure that if if I had had a PhD in Berkeley, then then uh, then I, I would have to have another uh, PhD in, in in Turku, and and of course that that in. Uh, look, look too tempting to me, and so, so. Uh, but I, I then in several courses I, I picked up uh, uh, topics in in many-valued logic, and and this be became my my kind of primary topic of, of research for for several years. And I, I also also had my my doctoral dissertation in in Turku in in many-valued logic in in, in 19, 1960. So this is uh, this is uh, kind of the basic stuff, but but I can. And so, any any details, if if you you want to ask. Okay, so, may I ask you? You said that you constructed the universal machine of Neumann. So, you never published it, or do you have the manuscript still left? It's it's all all. Uh, 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 I I have nothing left. So it it, it uh, I had this move from 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 uh, California to, to Finland and so forth. And, and somehow the, I have lost the papers, but it, it was not that that important. But it, it, it was really that, that it was a detailed detailed construction, all right. So, and, and why I didn't publish it, so, so of, of course it was my hill uh, who was uh, kind of responsible for this. He would have been one of, certainly one of the co-authors and, and together with me and, and Howard Jackson's. And, and and then 
then he 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 first uh, he, he was very enthusiastic that that we we published this and but then when uh, my he had good times and bad times and then when we were uh, supposed to start uh, negotiating the publishing then then he had this uh, his bad times and nothing came out of it okay you mentioned already that you picked up new research topics like like many valued logic which was the topic of your thesis and if i'm not mistaken you had very close connections also to Russia in in in, the, in, the, in this. So in Russia, they had studied this many-valued logic, especially Yablonsky and some others. And I, I'm not sure whether there were very much these kind of connections at that time already. So, can, do you have anything to say about that? No. So, so I I I never met Yablonsky. In Finland, except much much later, he was here in '78 at the big math con congress. But but so Jablonski was a very interesting person. So he 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 had very good results in many value logic. But he was kind of also the 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 uh, the communist representative of of the of the uh, uh, scientific community. So whatever you you wanted to do uh, or, or go. In Russia, you had to get Yablonsky's permission, so he was very, very strong guy in this sense. But I, I, I met him in 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 in, in, in several uh, occasions, in uh, several conferences, and and uh, one thing that 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 showed how how, how important he was. So he, he never asked me like like the uh, all other people in in the East. Uh, they they asked me to to send. Uh, uh, some some Western papers uh, to them that were un unavailable in in, in Russia, but uh, Jablonski never never asked them this. Instead, he he every year he asked me to send Zumstein stamp catalog. So he was a, a, actually a stamp uh, apparently a stamp collector. So so th this is what I, I I sent him, and this kind of sending papers. So th th this was then then later on. So. Uh, when we talk about uh, kind of uh, uh, inter inter international contacts and and so forth, so so uh, so uh, I I very very much I I I sent papers to 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 the eastern countries like 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 uh, uh, German Democratic Republic, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, uh, and, and and so so forth, and um, and. Uh, and so uh, now, now uh, I, uh, there have been some some newspaper items that uh, that somebody has had troubles uh, because because of this reason that he had said scientific papers he he has been in in this Stasi list so so I would say that I I would not be surprised if if when this uh, this Tietinen's list becomes public that I would I would be there so, <laughs> so, so this this is really but. But so, so uh, in in many valued logic, I had I had already earlier, early quite uh, uh, good contacts uh, uh, with with the Romanian Moisil, who who was uh, really a towering figure in in in, in many valued logic, and so so I, I met him also a, 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 a couple of of times, and he he he, he used to tell tell always. Uh, a joke. I mean, you you sure must have heard, heard this because it is so common joke that uh, it, it's about uh, a medical doctor and and uh, who, who tells tells a patient that that a person should drink only one glass wine in a day, and then the patient drank one glass of wine and and then he said that that now my, I'm having another glass because I'm a different person. <laughs> So, so this is okay. The other research topic you kept. Oh, let me still remind about these many-valued logic things. That actually these these results, what Arto proved in in early 60s, they have turned out to be very useful in in recent day, days to attack one of the most famous open problems in in automata theory, namely Czerny conjecture. So he was already at that time considering or developing tools to attack this Czerny con conjecture, although it's still unsolved so far. But the other influence 
you got from this Berkeley year was that you were introduced to, to automata theory. And I suppose this has very big influence in your later, later career. Uh, your first paper in automata theory appeared in 64, if I'm not mistaken. And, and, and soon after that, you got a professorship, full professorship, first in Oulu, and then a couple of months later in Turku, I mean, it's, I think 66, and that was the position where you stayed until your retirement, 1999. But af after getting this position in Turku, actually you returned very rapidly to, to, to North America, to Canada, to University of Waterloo. And so here, I think here we have, so at that time the traveling was much more difficult. You had to go by boat. Maybe this picture is on the return trip, but anyway, it's a boat trip to, um, from Canada back to, back to Finland in, in, in 60s. So what can you say about your stay in, in University of Western Ontario? Oh, the, the, this has been very uh, important to me throughout my life because I have had, uh, I, I had a two-year long visit there in the 60s, and then, then I, I have been there almost every year uh, since since then so uh, visiting so uh, this is where I, I also I, I wrote my my first book uh, theory of automata but I, I would uh, challenge this statement that, that it was uh, 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 troublesome and challenging the travel on the on the other hand these boats were luxury boats and 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 uh, and it was very strange because those days it was cheaper to travel by boat than uh, uh, than by plane. And now, if you you would made made a, a similar trip by boat, uh, this is something in the order of ten thousand dollars. So, so th this was very uh, is very much different. But uh, but uh, London, uh, I, when I say London, I mean London, Ontario. So the, the Western University there has been kind of my 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 very important place and I, I have been there there like I said many times after that and and so I have also uh, uh, very uh, close friends there and and I can also mention that uh, that that uh, two of the earlier took students uh, Lila Kari and, and Lucian Ilie they are now now professors of computer science in in London and the picture shows Andrew Zillard, who is my my oldest friend in 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 London, and and so so he he was also my my doctoral student then, but he he got his PhD in 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 London, so so it it was like that. So you got also first PhD students at that time. So I think you had a student in London, Neil Jones, who kind of finished his PhD soon after that, mm -hmm. and you also had first Finnish PhD students. I think the first one was. Uh, Pavel Turakainen and, and maybe Magnus Steinbu was one of the first also around that time. Yes, yes, so uh, so the, this, this was uh, 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 Neil Jones finished uh, the degree already when I was in London and, and then uh, Pavel and Magnus, they, uh, we were working by, by correspondence and, and then uh, actually when I came back, back in, 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 in 68 then uh, but Pavo's thesis was was already ready, and, and we could have a dissertation the the same same fall. So uh, the, I I would also also uh, use this opportunity in this question that that, uh, that maybe nobody has ever had such good PhD students, and and, and what what what, uh, uh, what what I is credited to me should should uh, quite uh, quite to to. to Quite a large extent, be credited to the students. Like uh, the the opponent is is one of them. So, so if I remember correctly, I, I think this was a time late 60s and early 70s. That was a kind of golden time of formal languages, also the foundations of theoretical computer science, and you were very much involved in this development. So you published. So you were already, I think, Arthur spent two years in Canada, and then he, he came back. 
And soon after, he, at that time, he had already published, or he published around that time, his first book, this Automata Theory, which was is actually a very nice, very original book on the theory of automata. You don't find many of these things in any other books than in, in that one. But I would say the major book was published in 73, and that was the book called Formal Languages. As, as John told, it has been very much appreciated and cited, and that was really a kind of cornerstone of formal language theory, which kind of showed the development of formal languages for centuries. And that was also the time when these kind of international conferences like ICALP was created, you had a special role in that, and also many, many journals were, were kind of created or directed to the theory of formal languages. Uh, would you like to comment about this period? Yes, uh, there were actually very few conferences earlier times, so uh, so uh, this is quite opposite what it is now. So and and uh, for, for instance, the first ICALP was uh, uh, was in in seventy two, and it, it was largely the the job of of, of Maurice and Iva, and it was not intended that it, it would be a, a series of conferences. So it uh, it, it uh, was uh, just later on, f first it, it was every second year, but then it started to be every sev sec every year, and now, now it's it's really a very, very big, big conference. And, uh, and so uh, what uh, uh, at the same time happened was, was that uh, uh, some people in, in Europe who were interested in, in what can be called theory of computing, uh, they, they got together and, and they, 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 they formed then what, what was called European Association of, of, the, of Theoretical Computer Science, EATCS. And uh, uh, again, Maurice Niva was, was the, the towering figure in, in, in this, and, but I, I, I was in, involved there already at at the beginning, and uh, and and so um, uh, so that's why uh, one of the very early ICALP con conferences was was in Turku. It, it was here in 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 seventy seven, and uh, and uh, then then also very uh, all the luminary in, in the field they they came came here. So so that that, that was uh, and. Uh, well, what about journals? So the, the journals started also. Uh, there were journals like Acta Informatica and, and uh, Information and, and Control. It was called first, but it, it it's now called Information and Computation. And uh, and, and then uh, theoretical computer science uh, uh, started in in in, in seventy five, and and so I, I have been uh, uh, the whole time. Uh, editor of, of this journal. Now, now I, I'm not actually editing anymore. I, I'm now honorary editor, but, but uh, also I, I, I could mention that the opponent had, uh, had a paper in the very first issue of, of theoretical computer science. Okay, at that time you met also Jacob Rosenberg, and which was maybe maybe closest or long, mo longest time collaborator of you. I think the collaboration continues still, still now. And, and I, I would like, but I would like, to, I would like to come to these collaborators in a minute, but I would like to address one interesting feature at that time. So you organized, you said ICALP in 77 and actually 76 already in Turku, we had the Scandinavian Congress of Mathematicians and you really attracted the topmost researchers to these conferences. In, there was Samuel Eilenberg was in Turku, Markus Uchamberse was in Turku, Yuri Matiasevich as a young, young almost student at that time, he was in Turku. And a big number of the, almost all major formal language theory researchers visited in Turku in, in that time. So may, I, I just wonder whether you have some kind of uh, memories about some of these big personalities so what what kind of or what kind of relations you had with these these persons like Sudhav Schutzenberg or or Eilenberg had 
Oh, they, they were very impressive persons. I, I would first say of, of this Scandinavian Congress that it, it was uh, arranged uh, together with uh, Obo Academy and, and Boris Schöber and Ule Högnes were, were very much in, involved also also in, in organizing this. And, and uh, really, uh, Eilenberg was, was one of the invited speakers and, and so was Matthias Evitz. So, Eilenberg was was very, uh, what can you say? So he he, he was very uh, uh, wise guy. So uh, what was the? Uh, I have for, I I don't remember this. Uh, 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 smart Sam Polish project project. So so S squared B squared was was how uh, he was called and uh, and so so he but but he. He was not uh, so. He he was uh, very famous in, in 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 classical areas in in, in mathematics. But then, then he uh, he uh, he uh, came uh, came uh, uh, or, or wrote this this book uh, uh, about uh, automata and languages. Actually, it was supposed to be uh, four volumes, but uh, but the last two never came out. Uh, he he was kind of. Uh, that I understood he was uh, not satisfied w with the reception the books had received, and they, they were really, uh, the reason was that they were really too too difficult for, for computer science students and even for most mathematics students, so, so this, this, this was really, uh, really, really not. And then Schwitzamerze was, was really, really a, a unique person, so, so you, uh, he, he, he uh, uh, he, his papers were very, very kind of uh, compact. So, in, in 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 three sentences, he said that you you something that you had to think, think uh, several days. And and then, when when he he, he also liked to uh, tell jokes, but but usually when he he told a joke, then you understood it only the next day. So. And uh, do, do, do you want to me to say uh, about Xegos or is it I think we're coming coming to that. Okay. So, okay. so uh, let's talk about now that your collaborators in, in general. As, as, as we mentioned, Xegos Rosenberg was one of your major collaborators. But you also collaborated very much with other dominant figures like Karel Chulik and, and, and Josef Kruska at that time. And if I'm not mistaken, there were, well, as, as quite often, that if you have big researchers, there might be some tension in between those persons. I, I, I understood that there were some tension between those persons, but you had no problems to collaborate any of those. And so how, how, did, you, how, how did you manage that? Well, I, I have always uh, tried not, not to uh, be in, in, in quarrels with, with anybody. And so, so the, the, this, this was really, of course, I don't want to mention these particular quarrels. They, 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 they were well known, and, and uh, I, I had to, of course, take, take a stand, and then, then I could explain the, the losing party why I, had, uh, why I had to take this stand. But, but this, is, uh, this is something that, that, that happens uh, to a person, and, and so I, I, I have no, no bad memories of, about this, so, so it, it's, it, it, it's all right. And, uh, and 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 uh, really, really, my uh, I, I would mention of the, of these co collaborations, Herman Maurer and, and and Derek Wood. So we formed together what was called MSW Group, and I I, I think this uh, we worked something like like six years together, and I, I think the, the, this was all, of all my collaboration. The, this was an ideal uh, ideal group for for this. So. So the, the, this was really we we complemented so so nicely each other. So uh, so Herman always uh, had a, had a very cl clever idea, and then then I told why why the idea was wrong, and then <coughs> Derek Wood he he showed us a way out. So 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 he uh, he, he said that that if you cannot solve the problem, you, t you then you change the problem. So this is this is I, I think a very very good good strategy, and uh, and so so the, the, this was really but but uh, now now Derek Wood passed away already and and this this group was also dissolved uh, 
but we we st still kept in contact after that. But but we didn't do do anything after after a, a, a beginning of of eighties. I, I wanted to point out this kind of this question about this tension because I think this is I knew about the answer at least in in principle, and this is a very nice feature of Arto that he can he can really collaborate with everybody, even the enemies, and so. So it's a very nice human aspect in, in his, his behavior. And of course, this, this collaboration of MSW, that was really marvelous and that was really admired by, by, by all researchers in the community. There was another kind of broad collaboration, collaboration to the group of people, and this was this collaboration with Romanian researchers. That started a little bit later. Maybe you have some some words to say about that. Well, this uh, the, this was of course uh, only only started uh, really in, in the 19 after the re revolution in, in 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 Romania. So so it it was really uh, before that. Like I said, I I, I I I had some contact with with Moisil, and then I I also. Met Solomon Marcus, but, but we didn't really, really do do anything. But then, uh, then uh, uh, after the re revolution, Lila uh, Kari came here, and she was my my doctoral student. Uh, actually, it, it was before Tux time, so she she never had any advantage of of, of Tux. That my my later uh, students, uh, Valeria Mihalake and, and and Lucia Nilia, they they were Tux students, and, and this, this was really. Really, a, gr a great advantage to ha have have tooks tooks around. Then, then of course, uh, the late Alexandru Matescu uh, was very close collaborator. So he was very good in in in, in kind of algebraic aspects. And and and, and with, with George Pound, I I also uh, did a lot of, of papers. And and also we are involved in in a book we wrote together. So so uh, George Pound is 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 maybe the m m Hardest work I, I know because always when the evening we were somewhere and in the evening there was a dinner or party then he he, he preferred to to put put the things in in latte and, and so, so in the morning everything was ready. So one one characteristic feature of, in your career is that you you wanted and succeeded to avoid almost all administrative things, which was, of course, very good for science. With one exception, you were the president of EATCS. It's, I think it's, it's kind of scientific administration, but it's still some kind of administration. So why, why did you take that position? Well, it, I was kind of forced to do this, so, so it was, it was all, all, already everybody was... Uh, so disappointed when I I, I didn't take uh, uh, take this position in the Turk Waikal, but then then I in in '79 I, I was kind of forced to do this. I, I, there was no way of avoiding this, and uh, there was some uh, some uh, of course the, uh, some some work there. So, so for instance, I I, I was able to uh, to uh, to influence uh, the role of of. Uh, of, of computer science in these big mathematic conferences, and 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 then then o o also the the EATCS bulletin became uh, kind of uh, then more 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 noticed uh, a journal, and 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 so so forth. Uh, so uh, I uh, I would uh, say that there there was some work in this, but nothing comparable. If if you are rector here not to speak of of, of uh, because I, I i was at uh, some some states uh, there was a pressure of me, me becoming the head of the academy and uh, that would have been uh, killing for me really so no, i i uh, that would have not been a job for me okay so uh, so as you have noticed already Sarto has been very broad in science so and I, I I have understood that you don't want to have a strict borders of different disciplines in science, but how 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 do you feel? Do you feel that you are mathematician or computer scientist or something else or just scientist? I I feel basically that I'm I'm mathematician. So I I started as a mathematician and then then the the problems uh, computer science problems uh, 
I, I, I have I have worked on they they all all have some uh, some clear clear mathematical interest so so I I, I think this is um, clear but and it's it's also uh, sometimes people say that that abroad I'm I'm known as as a computer scientist but in Finland as, as a mathematician and so I don't know whether it's true but but it, it's certainly true that that uh, uh, that most of uh, my closest contacts uh, abroad uh, they are computer science professors and the other related question I think several years quite many years I was we were talking about uh, role of discrete mathematics or discrete mathematics versus mathematics and I remember very clearly your response that I, I don't like the borders I would prefer good mathematics instead of bad mathematics so so is your feeling still well now now I, I more or less I, I I agree that you can you can use this term discrete mathematics and why why I, I kind of was was reluctant to use it earlier was was that that uh, th there were some people who who kind of had the view that this is kind of secondary mathematics and it, it, it's, it's, it's not, not really, really good. And I, uh, I was basically a, a kind of different opinion in, in this sense. Okay, so th this event is organized by TUX, so maybe, maybe it's fair to ask about your, your ideas of TUX. Of course, you were very influential in establishing a TUX. And the one thing which was not mentioned by, by Jon, was that actually in Finland, 1993, first centers of excellence were created. They were given to 12 scientists, and it was not a kind of very structured, but there were something which were co considered to be a kind of centers of excellence or kind of pre-stages of that, and Arto got one of those, one of these first 12 centers of excellences. Soon after, Tux was created, and you were involved in that, so maybe maybe you have some some words to say about well Tux in, 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 in Tux I, 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 I give hundred percent credit to, to Ralph Buck, so it was uh, he was the driving force and then in, in the planning the, there were three others involved myself and then the, the late Tapio Reponen and, and then Timo Järvi. Uh, and uh, what was really uh, uh, kind of uh, extraordinary in, in Tux that there was uh, in Finland that time uh, in the mid mid 19s uh, th there was no doctoral schools and doctoral education and 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 Tux was founded as as a doctoral uh, school uh, school for for PhD students and so it started in 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 uh, in, in 94 and I remember the uh, when the minister of education came came to Turku and 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 uh, and uh, we were talking. He he was kind of wondered that that we had here ready already an institution that were uh, that they were just planning in the Ministry of Education. And I I I, I think that this, this was also also kind of uh, what uh, uh, gave uh, Tux a very good opportunity to to, to uh, that the Tux was at the beginning uh, I understand so Ralph took care of this so I, he knows more but but uh, was very well well funded so and and it, it was also very good for for uh, the, the doctoral students because they, they could get funding in this way and and earlier times doctoral students they had they had to face problems like like uh, like uh, uh, where where to publish uh, their dissertation and how to get money for publishing but now when 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 Tux uh, came uh, uh, it could be put in immediately to, to the Tux series and, and now th I think there are already some 200 doctoral dissertations there so Tux, Tux was very very benefic beneficial and, and so I I hope it it, it it, it continues in, in some for, form or, or, or another. So let's talk about uh, something about education. I think Arto, uh, not, not only the researcher, but very much, very highly appreciated educator. And that was witnessed by his 80 year birthday when one of the best universities in Finland, ETH, in, in Europe, ETH in Zurich, 
they gave a golden medal to Arto for his achievements in computer science education. This is the event where Yurai Romkovich, and I think the medal is also given, shown there in, in the middle of that. And I would say that this education is very much through Arto's books. We talked about already about formal languages, but you have to remember that there has been 12 books translated or published in eight different languages. None of the languages Finnish, none of the languages is any Scandinavian language. So uh, uh, maybe Arthur's books could be translated into Finnish or Swedish sometimes. It has never happened so far. Well, but they are outdated, I would uh, say, most no, of No, they are not outdated. As and what was very typical, that Arthur has books in different topics. So this is a marvelous example, this book on which combines automata theory and some sense classical analysis, formal pa power series, and but here just formal power series, that's very appreciated, very original book, and that was clearly the first book of the topic at that time when, when it appeared. So, and, and you have books in all many different areas, including cryptography uh, and, and, uh, and, and many, many topics. Not to speak about, we don't have enough time to, to look at all the research directions Arto has opened through his papers. Would you, would you have something to say about your books or their educational? How, how did you feel? Were they supposed to be of educational purposes or? Well, well the, some of the books I have been, really I have had comments of people that they, they, they learned something about this and uh, the first time and so forth. And the, the, for instance, this Power Series book, so it, it, I have really a mar marvelous co-writer, Matti Soittola, and so, so he, he, he he settled uh, all, all the di most difficult problems in, in, in this book. So I, I, I think this is, this is a very, uh, w also very well cited book and uh, because uh, it, it's, it's uh, usually the, the topic before that was uh, treated on, only in, in, in friend, by French authors and, and, and friend, in French books and articles. So I, I recall this portrait you have seen, so that was done for Arthur's 60th birthday, but it's kind of more kind of historically important um, portrait because that was said to be the first computer-aided portrait. It was created by the University of Arts in Helsinki. And if you want to see the picture, you, you can come after, after August, to the Department of Mathematics. We have the picture, unfortunately, it's not on display now because we, we have not suitable fall for it, but then when we move back to the hill, then it will be shown, shown there. Okay, so let's, so one thing what I personally and as many other people have really admired and, one, and wondered how it had, has been possible that you have had enough time for science and family? How, how did you combine these, these two things all? Well, I, I, I like, like both very much, especially family, and so you always have time if, if you want to do this. And so, so it's it, it, it really, uh, I have never, uh, I have always tried uh, to be also good for, for children and, and and so my my wife never says, uh, or very seldom says anything positive. And but he, she has said that <laughs> she has said that that uh, that uh, when when the children were small, then then I never pushed them away and said that I'm busy. So so I I, I take the, this as a as a as a very very good good credit. And and I, I of course I I, I li like my children and and grandchildren and, and so forth. And and. Uh, <laughs> But I, I, I don't want to talk to, too much unless uh, you ask something more. No, I have, I have a, it's not connected to the relations between family and science. But I have a general quest, question. I, I have understood that you, can, you are very good in having a parallel thinking, that at the one, at, in any moment you can have a different 
different topics in your mind and you can you can distribute your men memory to solve these problems I, is that somehow a special capability you have or well the, uh, it used to be some extent uh, uh, some extent but but uh, now when you are older maybe maybe not so anymore but but i i used to for instance i i i, I used to to write a paper and and then 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 uh, my grandchild would would be next next to me, and and um, she would he or she would do do uh, her own own drawings, and then we we discussed both, and then then I I I asked also uh, about my paper that that uh, should I uh, say here in particular or, or especially, and and then then whatever she answered, uh, then then I put that in the paper. <laughs> So here's another picture where it's the kind of almost the whole family, unfortunately it's not exactly the whole, but it's very recent, it's taken this year. Um, so you, I, I mentioned already at the beginning that you, in Finland we had the rule that you have to retire at the age of 65, and that happened in your case in 1999. Did you feel badly when you had to retire? Well, in in some sense, because uh, uh, some uh, some members of my group, so uh, uh, in particular Alexandru Matescu, uh, they they were never. It seems to me they they were never happy about this when when they they had to uh, uh, go somewhere else. And so I I would have liked to to keep keep the group longer, but otherwise uh, it it's not so big difference for me as as for. Or some uh, laboratory guy uh, who, who needs need, need a lab, and and, and so so I, I can do what I like without uh, uh, having having the facilities. Like I I, I I I still still have a nice facility here, but still. But you you got this title of academician in two years of that, so I think that that was probably I hope. I thought that it was a big thing for you, or do you think that it was not that big thing? Or well, this is a difficult question. Of of course, I, 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 uh, it, 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 uh, it, it uh, really means means very little, and I, 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 I'm sure many other people would like appreciate this this more than me. But I, I don't want to say say anything more. But uh, um, as you said, that it was not so big thing for you to to get re to retire, and this is certainly influence its shown from your publication data. I checked it yesterday from DPLP after your retirement. So in these 15 years, the number of your publication publications is more than 100. So it's a normal number of publication of the during the whole career of a professor, or maybe even up a part of that. But th this shows that you certainly have continued your research, as you did it earlier when you had also other duties than than the free time. I would like to conclude these questions with two questions. I think we would appreciate very much if you would give some some of your recommendations for younger researchers. What should they do? Should they, uh, should they uh, for example, should they concentrate to basic research or applications, or, or what kind of recommendations? Do you have any, any recommendations? Well, my, my first recommendation, and this is also based on experience, is that, uh, that don't listen to anything an old guy says. <laughs> so so this, this, is, this is really, but, but if you want me to say something, then, then, uh, then maybe maybe it is that that what you do, you you uh, you you have to like it what you do. So so it, it, uh, so if you like like theory, then you do theory, and if you, you like to uh, do things that that uh, are sure to have some some applications, you you can do this, and 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 then then uh, also. Uh, don't be afraid of of, of hard uh, jobs and hard ha hard uh, problems. So, 
even if you, you don't solve the problem, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, still likely that, that you get something there than rather than nothing, if you think of it. And do you have any advice for politicians what they should do to keep their science in high position in the society? Well, they, they might uh, be wise to, to listen what I say, but, but they, they sure won't listen, listen to this. And, and, and so, uh, uh, so I, 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 I was uh, long enough uh, a faculty member, and, and, and I, I know that, that there were always some many matters and, and, and universities were, were asked uh, opinion and statement uh, about some matter, and then uh, we did quite much work and, 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 uh, and uh, said something, but, but nothing r really was, was taken into account. So whatever I, I say, say they, they, they don't, they don't uh, take it in, into account. But of course, uh, what I, uh, uh, a person like me, me uh, uh, normally says that, 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 uh, that don't uh, seek only for, for, uh, for things that 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 are kind of have uh, immediate applications and 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 bring immediately money. So so there, there are uh, uh, some something like like the work of Faraday uh, became much much later. So he 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 said he said to the Queen that 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 whatever it is, it it you can tax it, and and so so this this turned out to be later. On true and the same is of course for instance true of cryptography and number theory and, and so forth okay do you have still some any message you would like to give to the to the audience or to the members of the audience or well I I, I, I thank uh, all my students and, uh, and, and, and 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 everybody here and and especially all my family and so maybe maybe I I, I can say that I, I'm now, now maybe in the, the happiest phase of my life because I, I'm now a great grandfather. Okay, thank you very much. It was okay. very, very nice to have this interview, and I think we got a lot of authentic uh, information how the science has gone through during these 50 years. And I suppose we have some time for questions. No, not maybe too many, but some questions we can take. So, Vesa was the first one. Yes, I'm the first so one. So, please wait for the microphone. <coughs> no need for the microphone, I mean. Okay, I have a question about the future. So, I heard the rumor that you are going to buy a football club from England. And the, the club you are looking for seems to... <laughs> Like lose value every season, so so what can you comment about that too? Well, I I don't like to comment about this this because it, it's so unjust situation as as ever it can be because uh, because it's it's like uh, like uh, in Olympic uh, javelin contest if uh, if uh, Pitkamaki Pitkamaki has. Has, has uh, some debts and uh, doesn't pay them, then then of his result, t ten meters is taken away. So, so the, uh, some similar similar thing thing ha has happened here, and so so uh, this is true that it loses its value, but we will see how it goes. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, Ralph. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm just uh, curious because you have had such a long career now. I mean, you extended it with uh, <laughs> after your retirement. So, uh, and in one paper, you once talked about the three pipe problems from George Simon on, on on really difficult problems. So I'm thinking, are there any kind of important problems that you feel that are unsolved that you have kind of been working on and you haven't managed to solve. Is that kind of something which is bothering that you really would have liked to do it and it's kind of, it's still an open question. Well, certainly there, there are some, some questions like, like, like the one uh, Johanny mentioned, uh, this is called the Czerny conjecture in automata theory. So every now and then I, I, uh, 
I, 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 I do something of, of it, but uh, uh, I, 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 I used to say that, that I, I, I solve it uh, in the summer, but I didn't say which summer, so, <laughs> so it's, 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 it's really... So uh, then there are, of course, uh, some... some uh, uh, but I, I wouldn't say that, uh, that there is any, any towering problem that, that I... Because this journey is, is uh, no matter how you solve it, 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 it I, I don't uh, think it, it has so, so big consequences. So, so, uh, the, so the, the answer is, is no to your question, uh, short answer. So, any other questions? Wait, 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 wait for the uh, Has the process of, of actually doing science, has it changed uh, much from, uh, from the 60s? If, if one of us would be a PhD student in the 60s, what would shock us, if something would shock us uh, a lot? I, I think... Uh, more or less, uh, the situation now shocks you because because the the PhD student in in in, in the fifties uh, the the possibilities were were really especially for academic career they they were really abundant so so like my my first doctoral student Pavo Turakainen uh, one year after he finished his uh, his his uh, uh, thesis uh, he had uh, offer of uh, four full professorships, and, and so so he, he chose the, the one in, in Oulu because it was in pure mathematics. The others were in applied mathematics or computer science. So, so the, the, this is I, and as as as, as re really in in doing it, uh, I I think of course uh, the the main difference is, is is now that 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 you have the internet. So. So uh, if you are working with with somebody, so it it was uh, earlier times it was uh, imp practically impossible to to do any other means than snail mail. So, for instance, when I was student in in uh, in, uh, in uh, America in the fifties, then uh, then phone call was uh, so expensive that that it it was more than my monthly grant that was supposed to cover my living and everything. So. It was out of question for phone calls, and, and so there was. Uh, so and if if I work work with somebody, say, say no, not too far away, say in say in Holland, then like with Sebastian Rosenberg, we 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 were the only only way we worked together in earlier times was was by ordinary letters. Okay, still something to ask. If you have some very important questions, I believe that you can go to the office of Arto and ask for questions because Arto wants to talk always with every people. We should say once again, thank you very much.